Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another live. I'm happy to be here, guys. I'm here on a Wednesday. And it's because we had some breaking news to happen today with the Federal Reserve. And I want to talk about the breaking news. Guys, do me a favor as you come in. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and my audio is coming across okay. Just give me that thumbs up. Also, when you give me the thumbs up, tell me where you're checking in from. What city? What state? What country? Uh, what region? What part of the world are you in? Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate the thumbs up. It sounds like my audio is good. Awesome. Let me know where you're from, where you're checking in from, guys. I usually come on here on Thursdays, but I said, you know what? Wednesday, we had some breaking news regarding the Federal Reserve. Let's talk about it today. And I'll come on again tomorrow, of course, but I just wanted to have this quick conversation with you guys to update you on some very, very important news for American consumers and for investors, right? Right? Of course, I had to finish up my own nine to five and get done with all that and then come over here and have this conversation with you guys. So here I am. If you're new to hanging out with us, we talk money. We talk money management. We talk personal finances. We talk the U.S. economy and ways to help you grow your money, invest your money, save more money, and just be a real conscious investor. That's what we talk about on this channel, guys. And we do all of that in plain language, easy to understand language. So this is not, uh, you know, Bloomberg TV or MSNBC or Fox News. We don't do any of that heavy, heavy talk. We just give it to you. Basically, we give you complicated stuff in language that you can understand it, guys. So we got a thumbs up. Thank you. Mrs. Moore is in the house. Like to shout out, shout out you guys that actually helped me out and give me those thumbs up. Somebody's checking in from the BX. I think that's Bronx. Las Vegas is in the house. Thank you, Jim and I. Appreciate you being here from Richmond, Virginia. Jason G is from Boston, Mass, South Carolina's here. We got folks checking in from all over the place. Hey, appreciate your juicy work, Shaw, NW, all you guys. Appreciate you, John. Hi, hey, hi. Good to have you. Marcus Wojcik Sr., good to have you as well. So we want to have a conversation about the Federal Reserve, right? Today, the FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee, which is the arm, the committee of the Fed that actually puts down the policy in terms of what they're going to do with the Fed funds rate and what they're doing with their balance sheet, right? So the Fed today came down with a decision to keep the Fed funds rate the same. The, they didn't. They said, we're not going to cut. We're not going to raise, right? We haven't done anything like that. We're not going to cut them, right? Because cutting the rates can be, you know, inflationary if they're not careful. They said, we're going to leave them exactly the same and not touch them yet. Guys, we're, that means we're going to have higher inflation. For, we've got higher inflation for a little bit longer and rates will be more expensive. Money will be more expensive to borrow for a little bit longer, Right. I'm going to dig a little deeper into those things, but I want to dig deeper in a way that's understandable, right? So this is good for investors. I get it. It's not great that we have high interest rates and money costs more and money costs a lot, right? And they haven't cut the rates, right? When they keep the rates where they are, Fed funds rate is between five and a quarter and five and a half percent. When they keep those rates right there, it means money is going to be a little more expensive to borrow for longer, right? But hey, not to fret, because I want you guys to understand that this, there's two different ways to look at what's going on with the money in America. You can look at it from a consumer standpoint, or you can look at it from an investor standpoint. I want us to get to the point as intelligent investors to say, I want to look at the money from an investor standpoint, not just a consumer standpoint, not just a person who wants to go out and get these loans. I, want, I need a car loan. Oh my gosh, rates are going to remain high. Man, instead of getting 3% interest or 3% uh, rate, I'm going to get a 6% rate. That's a consumer. But an investor says, nice. Woo, looks good. Good news for me, guys. So that's what I want you to do, and that's what I want to be thinking about. So that's what we're going to talk about on this, this live. 
And let's see, it won't be a long lie, but it'll be enough to give you guys good, solid information. Martinsburg, West Virginia, checking in. Good to have you, Marcus. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going through the chat, guys. Sometimes I just run through the chat. Plainfield, New Jersey's in the house. Austria, good to have you. Glad you're here. Panama or Pomona, Pomona Kansas. Panama, Pomona, Kansas. Uh, let's see here. Katrina Darlene. Let's see. Uh, Middle Middleboro, Matt. Is that Maine? M A. What is M A? I should know that. Uh, let's see here. Great stock market today. Clint Perry, you said a, a big word there. Great stock market today. And that's why investors should be hyped, right? Huge for investors today, guys. Huge, huge, huge. The Fed just made it easy for investors to build wealth. That's the kicker, right? They just made it easy for us investors to build wealth. Right, and we'll talk about the rule of thumb uh, when the Fed does this, the market does that. We'll get into that briefly. Now, let's keep in mind. I want to keep something in mind, guys. The Federal Reserve, every time they come out and have their meetings, just keep this in mind. They got a dual mandate. This is what they say. This is what they say. You go to the website, read it if you want. They have a dual mandate. They want to stabilize prices, keep prices down. That's what they say. Keep prices down, and they want to achieve maximum employment. Right. They don't want everybody working. They just want everybody working to the tune where inflation is growing at about 2% per year, core inflation, right? So today the Fed chair came out and said, listen, guys, we are keeping the Fed funds rate the same and we're not cutting rates. Everybody expected a rate cut, not everybody, but at some point this year, everyone expects the Fed to start cutting rates. We know that they spent a year and a half, two years of raising rates, raising them, raising them, raising, them, trying to deter you from spending. So now they're going to start cutting rates to actually push you out there to spend, right? They when when the, when the Fed says we're going to cut rates, it means we want we want to kind of stimulate the economy. We want to get you out there, out there buying. We want to take that Fed funds rate. We want to take your Rate to go get a car loan from 6% down to 5%. And that's going to incentivize everybody to go spend. And of course, like we said, when everybody goes to spend because the rates are lower, that actually has an effect that we'll talk about. So Fed chair came out. We're keeping rates the same. Now, by the way, guys, smash the like button for me. Please hit the like button. Please, please, please. Smash this like button as we have this conversation. If you're here, it takes about, what, one second to find that thumbs up and click it. Boom. All right. All right. So now cutting rates is now cutting rates is good for consumers. The Fed doesn't cut rates. Not so good for consumers. Right. And again, we are investors. We're trying to grow money. Right. I want to I talk more on this channel about growing money than about spending money. So how do we actually grow money better? Balance sheet, balance sheet, balance sheet is what I heard from the Fed when I listened to the presentation by the chair, Jerome Powell out of New York, right? He's the, what district is New York? There's 12 districts. Fed is broken up into 12 different districts, right? St. Louis, Minneapolis, Kansas City, San Francisco. And the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, the chair is always out of New York, right? So I heard today the Fed talk more about balance sheet than I really heard them talk about before. I haven't heard them really talk about balance sheets too much in a while. And so I want to kind of talk about the balance sheet just a little bit on here, guys, just a tad bit. The Fed kept saying, or the chair, Jerome Powell, kept saying or kept mentioning, and he got questions about this too, that the, he said, and his quote was, let me see if I can see it and find it. There it is right there. He said the Fed wants a smooth transition of runoffs to lower their balance sheet. This is what he said, a smooth transition of runoffs. What in the world was he talking about when he said the Fed wants a smooth transition of of runoffs to lower their balance sheet. Let's not get it twisted. The Fed is a corporation. It's a corporation. They have a balance sheet. They have assets and 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 and, and liabilities, etc. Right? 
Let me let me share my screen with you guys. And if you're not on YouTube, come on over to YouTube so you can see the screen and join us over on YouTube. By the way, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to this channel where we try to break down money stuff in a way that we all can understand it a lot easier. So let me share my screen with you guys. While I'm while I'm sharing my screen, I just want to rap to you guys about what this looks like and what this is. Right. What do we have before us? We have assets, 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 right? Assets of the Fed, right? Assets of the Fed, right? And I don't know if I can make this bigger, but this date over here is about 2023, 2024 at the very tip there. So during the pandemic, guys, I just want to kind of break this down so we understand because I want you to be an informed investor an informed consumer, an informed human being in America who's an adult and understand and knows what's going on with the money. Since we use it every day, we might as well know what's going on with it, right? So let's let's look at this graph for all you visual learners, right? During the pandemic, guys, during the pandemic, the Fed printed money. The Fed, along with the U.S. Treasury, printed money had money printed, and they doubled the size of their assets, okay? So if you look right here, this is 2020 right here. What happened in 2020? Boom, 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 went way up, right? Went way up. Boom, 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 went way up. This is their assets in in, in millions of dollars. So this is, this is, I think this is like billions, right? So from four, Way up to eight, almost nine, just below nine. I think right at nine. From four to nine during the pandemic, the Fed doubled the size of their assets on their balance sheet. How? By printing money. Literally, pretty much out of thin air. All right. Depending on where you go and where you read and who you talk to, they, they literally print money out of. Now, the Fed doesn't print the money, obviously, right? That's uh, the government prints the money, but the Fed works with the government to print the money. And then the, go the, the Fed takes that money or took that money and they went out and started purchasing a ton of bonds and a ton of MBSs. When you hear them say MBS, that's just mortgage backed securities, right? And they added these things. They took the cash, bought the bonds, and they added the bonds to their balance sheet the securities to their balance sheet, right? And we can see it. It's very clear on the graph here, guys. This is what happened right here. The balance sheet went up and up and up to nearly or over nine. I said trillion. That's actually nine billion, I believe. I'm sorry, nine, uh, uh, nine, I don't know my zeros. Look at me, right? So at the same time in America, when they were adding to their balance sheet, they also... We're handing out what to every single American person or everybody that was breathing basically got a stimulus check, right? Not everybody, but most people they got stimulus checks. Why do they even call it stimulus? Because they're trying to stimulate the economy and they got PP check, PPP loans and things like that. This adding money by buying bonds. Okay. They print the money. They go out and buy bonds. And they, a lot of times, they bought bonds and MBSs from banks, right? The goal was to stimulate the economy that had shut down in the beginning of the pandemic, right? Let me say it a different way, because sometimes I say things and they don't make sense, not even to me. Let me say it a different way. The Fed creates money out of thin air. It's printed up, they get it. And then the Fed took the money that was printed, and they went out and bought bonds with the cash money. A lot of times they bought the bonds from banks. So when the Fed buys bonds with cash that was printed, the Fed has now has an asset called bonds on their balance sheet that we see right here. And the banks, <laughs> now they have cash, right? The Fed goes to a Bank of America and buys a billion dollars worth of bonds. 
The Fed now has the bond and the banks now have the cash. And so when the banks have, have the cash on their books, guess what the banks can do? The banks can now lend money more freely and more easily, which is what the Fed wanted at the beginning of the pandemic to stimulate the economy. They wanted to get every because everything shut down and everybody's staying in their house with masks on their face. So nobody's buying anything. So we didn't go into a full fledged recession. The Fed said, how can we add money to the system? Liquidity to the system because money is liquid liquidity to the system. Here's how we can add liquidity to the system. We can have a really low interest rate, really low Fed funds rate. Remember, it was down around 0 0.5 or something like that, right? Less than 1%. Pandemic, low interest rates, because low interest rates does what? It incentivizes everybody to get out there and buy. So now we have low interest rates, so everybody can buy. And we also have um, stimulus money put in your hands so you can go buy, buy things, right? And we also have a balance sheet that's full of bonds on the Fed. On The Fed The Fed has a balance sheet with, that's full of bonds. You got money in your pocket. We have low interest rates. We're incentivizing you to go out and spend, spend, spend America. Spend, spend, spend America. Spend. I just made that song up. Bad song. But listen, when interest rates are low and banks have more cash, bang, and you have more money, bam, the spending happens. The, the getting the loans happen the, the, because they add it to the liquidity of the U.S. economy. This is how the balance sheet ties in. So the Fed doesn't only have one way to lower interest rates, right? They have one main way, and that is to control the Fed funds rate. But the other thing that's rarely talked about is the balance sheet and the control of the balance sheet, either QE, quantitative easing, or what we're doing, what the Fed's been doing for the last year and a half, two years is QT, quantitative tightening, tightening. Because remember, they put all that money out into the system. Get, the banks got all the money. The bonds, the bonds went on the Fed's balance sheet. The cash went on the bank's balance sheet. Everybody got loan, got PPP loans and money and stimulus checks. The, st the economy was stimulated. But guess what? It was stimulated so much that it caused really, really, really high inflation a couple of years later. Inflation went way up because there was so much liquidity in the market, right? That's what happened when you push a ton of money into the market. This is why it, you got to be careful with just printing out a whole bunch of money because ultimately into the economy, it may cause some type of inflation. Now, there's other reasons. Don't get me wrong. People say, well, there was price gouging and the oil companies and the this company and the retailers, they were pushing, the, they were pushing up the Listen, if you're a business and everybody got money to spend, you're going to raise probably raise your prices too. It happens. That's what happens in a free market type of economy, sort of pseudo free market, right? Right? But all of that caused some high inflation. Not a big deal. I don't know where you stand on the on the political pendulum. It doesn't really matter. Econ ec economics is economics. There's some tie in to politics, but it's all economics for the most part. Now they've been frantically working on trying to scale all that back and undo a lot of that on this balance sheet that I have in front of you, right? This is what you see. That's why you see we went up, then we had this, boop, that was a glitch. Then we went up, boom, boom, see that glitch right there? Boop, boop, that was when the banks failed, right? Last year, about this time, they had, there were several banks that fail, right, that uh, had to go under. But look at what's happened since here, guys. In the summer of 2022 is when inflation peaked. CPI was over 9%. Core PCE was well into the six-something percent. It was super-duper high. That's where my cursor is right here. That's when inflation peaked. What did they start doing as soon as inflation peaked? Look at the, look at the balance sheet go down. Boop, that hiccup right there. Balance sheet going down, down down. This is what the balance sheet is all about. Okay. 
For the last 18 months or so, the Fed has, 24 months, really, the Fed has been trying to pull back those inflationary practices of flooding the market with money. How? By raising the interest rates constantly, constantly. When you raise interest rates, you deter consumers from borrowing money. They make money more expensive to borrow. When you make more exp money expensive to borrow, people say, wait a minute, I don't want to borrow so much money. I don't want to borrow, so I don't want to borrow money. It costs too much. It costs too much. Slows down buying. Slows down borrowing. And the Fed has also been very, very intentional about letting these bonds roll off their balance sheet, right? Which is now reducing the liquidity in the market. The Fed calls this unloading securities or balance. He called it today in the meeting. He said balance sheet runoff. This is the balance sheet runoff, all right? Where it gets rid of bonds, reducing their assets and letting securities roll off the asset side of the balance sheet. Listen, that's the great runoff. Just so we're clear, a runoff is when the Fed elects not to reinvest when those bonds mature. They eat, so they let them run off the balance sheet, right? Quantitative tightening. So again, I don't want to go too deep into that, right? I don't want to make this though. And I'm no expert, right? I'm no expert. I don't claim to be an expert. I just understand some of this stuff, right? Right. But again, we only hear about typically how does the Fed going to what's the Fed going to do? The Fed's going to lower the interest rate. We hardly ever hear about the balance sheet, which also helps to control the money supply into the market, into the economy that affects all, a lot of these things as well. Right. They print money to inject it into the economy. Right. And buy bonds. And then they let bonds roll off and it takes money out of the economy. That's the basics. The balance sheet runoff is not talked about much, but we heard it several times today. So the Fed keeps rates the same. The Fed kept the funds, Fed funds rate the same. Great news for investors. If you're an investor, excellent, fantastic. You should be happy, right? The Fed funds rate is at a 23 year high between five and a quarter percent and five and a half percent. And it's been there for five straight meetings that the Fed has had, had back to the end of last year. They have not touched it. They raised it, raised it, raised it, and they left it the same for the last five meetings that they've had. Now, the general consensus is that the Fed is going to lower this rate, cut rates, bring that rate down two to three times throughout the course of the rest of this year. So we could see rate cuts. Here is the general rule of thumb for all investors, okay? The general rule of thumb for investors is this. Let me stop sharing my screen. By the way, guys, don't forget, hit the like button, smash the like button, share the link, uh, 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 check out a few other videos in the description box. There's things in the description box here on YouTube for you to check out. 24 Laws of Money, free from me to you. Just a free ebook. There's also my website, smartmoneybro.com. You can check me out and follow me on, you name it, LinkedIn, Twitter, X, IG, Facebook. We got a Facebook page called Smart Money Bro at Facebook, and we got a Facebook group. It's a private group on Facebook as well. Or you can join this channel. Guys, there's lots of ways to connect and hook up and reach out to me, et cetera. I got some other contact information in the description box below. But smash the like button for me because it lets the YouTube algorithm know this is a video that's worth watching. I'm just trying to give you guys some knowledge because I want you to be a more informed consumer. I want you to be a more informed investor, right? We, we know how to consume, right? But I want you to be an informed consumer. A lot of us don't know how to invest, but I want you to understand what I'm talking about because it's going to help you invest and be a better investor, be a more in informed investor as well. The general rule of thumb is this, guys. And here's why the markets have reacted favorably to the announcement today. The Fed reacted favorably because the Fed gave an indication that there will be more cuts coming. All right? And we expect that two cuts, maybe three cuts, right? 
They're coming several times, guys. When the Fed cuts rates, it usually causes the market to do what? Anybody know? <laughs> when the Fed cuts rate, as we indicated would happen later this year, right? It causes the stock market to typically go up. So when there's a promise of the, of the cut, which today we got sort of an indication from the chair, Jerome Powell, that the cuts were still on, they're still going to happen. When that happens, when there's a promise of rate cuts or rates get cut, it usually causes the market to react favorably and go up. That's why this was good news for investors, right? Good news for investors. Investors made it easier for us as, as investors to build some wealth. Now, when the Fed raises interest rates, the Fed funds rate, when we say raise interest rates, we're saying when the Fed raises its Fed funds rate, which causes a trickle-down effect to banks raising their rates. And that's why you hear people say sometimes, when the Fed raises rates, the Fed only raises the Fed funds rate, one rate. And banks, in turn, usually raise their rates that they charge us as investors for short-term loans, like credit cards, like automobile loans, like you know regular secured, unsecured loans. You go out and take, take out short-term loans, right? When the Fed raises their interest rate, it usually causes the markets to go down. So the promise today sort of a promise, sort of an indication that the Fed would be cutting rates in the near future. In the future, investors took favorably to that information. So today's announcement sort of seemingly almost guaranteed rate cuts are coming, right? And the stock market rallied and closed at an all-time high. I think there was a few of them. Let me look at a couple of articles here and see. A couple of them closed at an all-time high today, which was sweet, right? As an investor, right? As an investor, sweet. Let's check this out. Let me just see if I can't go to a couple of them. Let's see here. Uh, and I'll, I'll share my screen with you guys because I like to share my screen, right? So, I think I saw an article here in Barron's. Let's go to Barron. Barron's, Barron's. Stock market news. Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ hit record closes. Central bank officials still expect to cut interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point by the end of the year. And it goes on to stay. Stocks, say stocks rallied Wednesday. I can't make that bigger. I'm sure I probably could. Stocks rallied on Wednesday. After the Fed held interest rates steady, the three major indexes all noticed record closing highs. Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, that's the three major indexes we follow, right? There's Russell and all that. We get that, but those are the big ones, right? Those are the big ones. Let's see here. Let me go to another one here. Let's see here. I always like to run to a couple of these uh, deals. I think there's another one here that I want to pull up. up, up, up. Let's see. There it is right there. This one's from, uh, this is CNN. Stock surge after Fed indicates three rate cuts still coming this year. Market surge Wednesdays. What we covered here, this is just a simple breakdown of the article itself, right? After the Fed Reserve said it's holding its benchmark lending rate of five and a quarter, the Fed funds rate is always in a range. It's between five and a quarter and five and a half percent right now and suggested that it still expects to cut rates three times this year. Fifth straight policy meeting where the central bank has opted not to raise and not to cut interest rates and keep those puppies, to keep that puppy steady, right? Investors weren't expecting any surprises Wednesday. Didn't get any surprises because the market, the stock market, as an investor, understand the stock market prices in whether or not the Fed is anticipated to cut lower or keep rates the same, keep their rate the same, right? So the stock market had priced in already that the Fed probably would not be, in, be, be cutting the rate this time around, right? 
Uh, let's see. Fed officials also released a fresh set of economic projections, giving Wall Street and the White House some clues on the timing and pace of rate cuts. Why is that an issue? Well, the White House, folks, we're in an election year, 2024. Listen, what the Fed does, they they stay in, they they say they stay impartial. That's just what they say, right? They stay, they're not they're not Republican, not Democrat. They they say they stay impartial, but some folks would beg to differ on that assertion, right? That the Fed actually does do some things that are partial. In an election year as huge as this election year, what the Fed does with the Fed funds rate is an amazing it's, it's amazingly important for the White House. Guess what happens when the Fed does something and the economy looks great because the Fed, the Fed decided to lower interest rates and cut the rates? The White House now has a talking point. And so the White House now, whoever's in the White House, Republican, Democrat, they have a talking point at the debate or whatever they're going to have. Now we can get before the chemist. Well, you know, those prices are really down. You know, the president has done this. And if the, if the rates aren't cut, and the rates remain high, and all of a sudden things go wacko in the economy, the, the the president can't say that. But the president's opponent can come in and say, you know, this is the worst economy, economy we've been in. You get what I'm saying? It's not really political, but not supposed to be political, but it ends up political, right? U.S. stocks closed at all-time highs after Fed meeting. U.S. stocks soared to new highs today uh, in afternoon trading as investors cheered the Fed Reserve's policy rate decision, economic projections, and Fed Trump Chair Jerome Powell's press conference. Just central bank kept interest rates unchanged, but made a strong indication that there would still be three rate cuts this year. Every time rate cuts are announced or rate cuts are indicated, usually the rule of, the rule of thumb is yay for investors. Right? The S&P reached a new record and topped 5,200 level for the first time this year, closing 0.9% higher at 5,224.62. The blue chip Dow also reached a record high in the tech savvy or tech heavy NASDAQ. Also a new high. Huge. This is why in the beginning of the video, guys, today, I said point blank, breaking. The Fed just made it easy for investors to build wealth. This is the key. You got to be an investor to be building wealth. Last live, I said, listen, guys, the 30 highest days in the stock market in the last 30 years made a huge difference in what your overall return would be after 30 years. I know that's a long time, but hey, you can't be jumping in and out the market. You just can't do it. You can't afford it right? You got to be in the market, not timing the markets, but spending lots and lots of time in the market, right? You can't be jumping in and out. Guys, please don't do it as investors. Please don't do it. Get in the market. Stay in the market. Keep yourself in the market. Dollar cost average into the market, but don't keep jumping in and out of the market, the stock market. Please don't do that, guys. Hey, uh, mommy traders in the house. Good to have you. Somebody said, O'Brien, keep the videos going. We are O'Brien. Screen is blurry. Why is my screen blurry? I cannot believe the government doesn't work to pay the deficit down. Shame on them. Look, $34 trillion deficit, guys. $34 trillion deficit. The problem is this. Let me just tell you guys, this is the problem. The deficit is about politics. As soon as you try to do something to lower the deficit, something's got to be cut. Let's just keep it real. If the government wants to bring down the deficit, something is going to have to be cut. Something is going to have to be let go and sacrificed. There's going to have to be a some type of sacrificial limb going on. And guess what? You cannot sacrifice anything because then you will perhaps get some bad press. If you say I'm going to reform some type of program or I'm going to cut some type, some, type, some type of defense spending, you're going to get bad press. Let's just be real with it. So it's you can kind of tie your, you can almost kiss 
your political career goodbye if you say I'm going to make some changes. I don't care what happens, right? That happens. You got to be careful about that. So it's really tough. What are we going to what are we going to cut? Right? What are we going to let go? I don't know, right? I don't know. Somebody said, uh, let's see, I wonder who is in office. Uh blah, blah, blah. Let's see, Clint, when you raise interest rates, you also slow down business growth. Absolutely. Good point, Clint. Raise interest rates. Uh-oh. Everybody's rates go up. Money costs more. That's going to slow down business growth because guess what? Businesses can't grow if consumers ain't out there consuming because of too high interest. Very good, Clint. Excellent point. Bama here, bro. Good to have you, Gary. Good to have you. Patrick checking in from Charleston, West Virginia. Let's see. Nothing like two non-skippable ass trying to get in live. Wow. Sorry about that. I got to change that. Uh, let's see. When you say investors, are you talking about stock, real estate, or any form? I'm talking about stock, right? The real estate market is a little bit different than the stock market. I'm talking about investors in terms of the stock market investors. Okay, good question. Let's see here. Man, did I did I really have an ad in the middle of this, guys? Let me know if I had an ad in the middle of this live because I can go back and change that and make that change. I apologize about that if that happened to you guys. Yes, congratulations, all investors. And if you didn't invest, what are you waiting on? Get off the sidelines and get in the action. Get in the game, right? The beauty about the stock market game is you put yourself in the game. You ain't got to wait on coach to call you in. Coach put me in. Coach put me in. No, you just get it. Take your jersey off. Stop sitting at the end of the bench. Come down here to the front of the bench and get in the game, right? No, there's never a guarantee about how the market is going to really react. There's other things that make a play make a play. I'm just giving you rules of thumb. Right? We shall see what happens. Stock market's going up crazy. Is the stock market reaching a bubble? Is the stock is many of the stocks overvalued, overpriced and overvalued? Yeah, probably. Probably. I could be wrong. I'm no expert. But I think there is some overvaluation valuations going on right now. Let's see. Somebody said if banks start falling and rate cuts happen, the market could could go down. Could. And remember, the 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 loan program that the Fed set up last year to cover those banks, that loan bank term funding program, that bank term funding program expired on March 11th. The Fed let that bank term funding go, although many, many, you know, uh, banks were using it. Now, were they using it because they really needed it or were they using it because they could get uh, some discounts as opposed to going to the discount window? They could go right over to the bank term funding. Now, we don't know that, right? We'll see. There could be more banks. Now, last Fed meeting, Jerome Powell very clearly indicated that there could be other banks falling. Smaller banks, more regional banks, not the big banks, right? But just keep that in mind as well. As consumers, you want to know what's going on with the banks as well. Yes, all of this stuff is complicated, right? There's so many moving parts. And when you get a two-minute blurb or a two-minute um, uh, story on CBS or Fox or ABC, you're not getting the, the full gist of the information. You're just getting that quick blurb. And you usually, nowadays, you're getting it from a very, 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 very biased source. Don't get me wrong. ABC was biased in 1975, too. I get it. CBS was biased in 1981 with Ted Koppel, or that's ABC, Ted Koppel. Yes, I get it. But today, because of how everybody split down the middle, left, right, and these, these politics are dividing people more and more, you're getting an even more biased view of everything you watch, depending on what news station you get. There's very few news stations. Guys, do me a favor in the chat. If anybody knows can put in the chat some very unbiased news stations or news outlets or news websites. Put that in the in the, in the, in the chat section because some people don't want to get news that's... I, I prefer the old Walter Cronkite, right? How many of you remember Walter Cronkite? He came on, on he reported the news. He, we, didn't, we didn't need any Wolf Blitzer commentary or editorial, right? I don't care what Wolf Blitzer really thinks. 
But you know, we didn't – back in the days, you had Walter Cron Cronkite. He comes on and give you news straight down the middle for the most part. It could have been a little biased. We know that. But it was for the most part. It seemed pretty down the middle, right? But now it's like, man, depending on what station you turn to or what you listen to or read on social media, it's just way biased one way or the other. And the problem with that is that you're being taught to think a certain way. You're being taught what to think instead of being taught how to think, right? Getting information and then making a decision about what you think is totally different than what you get right now on most news outlets in, the, in America. You're getting told what to think, right? CNN is telling you, is telling you, I'm spitting all over the place. CNN is telling you what to think. CBS is telling you. Fox News is telling you what to think as opposed to giving you information and letting you make up your own mind. That's my opinion. I could be totally wrong. If I'm wrong, guys, you know, just uh, let me know. I'm okay with that. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Thank you for your tips and education. Purple guys, my pleasure. My pleasure. Oh my, we can't afford any of that here in Japan. NW's in Japan. Good to have you here, NW. Watching from Charlotte, North Carolina. Just going through the chat. Let's see. Wonder if I should put my money in now or wait for the next dip. Dollar cost average your money into the market. Stop waiting on the dip. Don't you listen? You ain't that good. You're just not that good. You're not that. Yes, you you go you're gonna make it a couple of times. You're gonna miss a bunch of times too. Just go ahead and dollar cost average in. One, let's see. Sacramento, California in the house. Good to have you. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Hello from San Francisco, the Bay Area. You're welcome, ML. Absolutely. Some stocks are overvalued right now. I really believe that, guys. When will the bubble burst? I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't want to claim to know. I'm an ETF guy and I am an index fund guy. I'm not a big individual stock person. I don't try to pick, choose, pick, choose, miss, hit, hit, miss, home run, single, home run, strikeout, home run, strikeout, single, home run, strikeout. No, ETFs, index funds, right? Somebody said Al Jazeera is a good news station. Okay, kind of imbal or balanced out, right? Okay, Al Jazeera, I've heard that before. I don't really, haven't really watched them much. Let's see. I believe the rates need to be higher. Wow. VM said, move those rates higher. However, since the rates were so low for a long time, which the rates were really, really low for a long time, let's just keep it real, guys. Let's just keep it how they say it. Let's keep it 100. Is that how they say it? Rates were really, really low, guys, for a really long time through 2012 and 2015 and 2018 and 2020. Rates were very, very low. I think now, historically speaking, rates, they're probably right now more what in line with what rates are typically throughout the last 100 years or so. But <clears throat> let's see here. Um, let's see. Invest Investopedia might be an unbiased place. I only watch Bloomberg for finance news. Uh, let's see. Get your money to work for you. Flip it instead of trading time for money. Yes, Tony Fernandez always take money. What do we know about money? Money goes down in value. Money sinks in value. Your number one job as an investor in America, anywhere in the world, is to take money and flip it as soon as you can to something going up in value. Take money as not all money. Keep a little bit of money that's liquid for emergencies. But otherwise, take money and flip it. You got to get in the habit of flipping money. Flip it for things going up in value. Stop flipping it for a car. Stop taking your cash money and go flipping it on a shirt, flipping it on, on shoes. Of course, you got to have shirts and shoes. I get it. But too many people don't flip it on concert tickets. Right? People, some people pay three, four, five hundred dollars for concert tickets and don't have flip it for something going up in value. That's how you handle money, Tony. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate you. NW, let's see. I'm not from Japan. I'm in the OBX. Gotcha. New York City in the house. Good to have you guys. Listen, the whole point of this, guys, is to say, listen, if you're an investor, the Fed today just did you a favor. The Fed today, I don't know how much money you have invested. The Fed did you a favor. The indications that the Fed will still be cutting rates later this year 
is a favor to all investors. And the reason I know it's a favor, look at what happened to the market today. NASDAQ, Dow, S&P, all up, right? Go check your balance on your investments if you're invested in the S&P or if you're invested in an index fund, a broad index fund or a broad ETF. Uh, it's up. The Fed did a favor to all of us investors, right? Did the Fed do it? Do it? Do it? Uh, do one for the um, consumers? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Right. But look at this thing called money. Look at this thing called economy from two sides, two angles. You should be. You really should be looking at this thing from three angles: a business, a consumer. And an investor, business, consumer, investor. Why business? Because understand what businesses are doing and what businesses go through and what businesses have to do. Why are businesses laying off? Why are they not laying off? What's going on with Tyson Foods, right? Laying off a bunch of people in, in one place and then make putting a story out saying we're going to hire 50,000. Let me show you this, this real quick here. 50,000 uh, immigrants, Tyson Foods. Boop, 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 boop. No, I won't show you. But yeah, the point is what's going on with labor? What's going on with labor? <laughs> right? I heard that story. I, that story might have, I didn't, don't, but don't, don't quote me on that story, but what's going on with labor? in terms of business, right? You're going to want to know that. Even as a consumer, you want to know that. You want to understand consuming, consuming and consumption from more than just a consumer standpoint. That means you got to understand it from a business side. You got to understand it from um, an investor side, right? You got to understand these things from other places other than just some consumer who's just consuming and consuming and consuming and consuming and staying poor and staying broke and living paycheck to paycheck. No, you don't want that. You got to get out of that hamster wheel, get out of that rat race, right? And you got to move to a whole nother level with your thinking because when you move to another level with how you think, then you move to another level with how you behave with money, right? A very, very conscious consumer is going to behave differently than somebody who's not conscious. They just go out and buy, 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 spend, spend, no, no consciousness, right? And so, therefore, you have to be a conscious consumer. You have to be an investor who's informed. And you have to see things from more than just your angle, right? Something to think about. Something to think about. Let's see. Somebody said, unfortunately, there's no fair news in the U.S. I watch BBC World, a combo of national and local. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna tell you guys flat out. Can I can I give you guys tell you guys something? Just be transparent with you. If I can be transparent with you, just let me know. Give me a nod, give me a thumbs up. Can I be transparent? Very, very transparent with you. Okay, help me. Let me know if I can be very, very transparent with you. Let me know that. Give me a thumbs up if I can be very transparent. I want to tell you something. This is it. I don't even watch the local news. I haven't watched a local news broadcast, not even for the weather. I haven't watched a local news broadcast or read a local news. I, there is one local paper I like to get for the history, and it's a free paper. You just pick it up uh, where I go get something to eat at. Just pick it up. But other than that, I don't watch the news, and I rarely watch national news. The only time I watch national news is if it comes across the screen or something. I'm watching basketball or something like that, right? The only reason I really pay attention to what's going on with everything is because I'm an investor, and I have a YouTube channel, and I like to inform you guys of what's going on too. Other than that, I don't watch local news. Because I understand that it has one goal. That is to pay their bills. So I don't watch local news. I don't, I don't, I refuse to watch local news and I don't really watch national news. I just kind of 
I get my news by reading what I see on 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 uh, various uh, news sites on on the internet, and I only get it because I pass the news and the information about what's happening on to you guys. Because these are things that, as an investor, as a conscientious 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 consumer, I need to know. So I get my news on a need to know basis, right? I really do. That's my secret of the day. Don't beat me up, guys. But it's the truth, right? I pay attention to it because I want to bring you guys the right information and I want to bring you what's going on. Let's see. Somebody said, uh, unfortunately, there's no boom, boom. Got that. Buy tickets early and flip them closer to the event if you're buying concert tickets. Yeah. I don't know if that's legal or not. All right. Cheap labor will save the corporations tons of money. Yeah. Are they are they allowing all of the immigration to happen in America? At all the borders, Canada, east, wherever, south, southern border, are they allowing that to now have less uh, a big labor class who's going to actually do some of the work? Mm, you got to ask yourself that. You should be paying attention to that, right? If you are a worker in America, you need to understand labor. Look, if you don't understand labor in America, you really don't understand America, okay? You really don't understand America if you don't understand labor, labor unions. What happened in the 20s? and th what, what is the Davis-Bacon rule, right? Anybody know what Davis-Bacon is? Happened in the 1930s, right? Anybody? The point is you got to understand labor. And you ain't got to be no business person to understand labor. Labor is huge. And maybe what's happening with immigration is inexpensive labor, right? I don't know. I don't know. Right. Can you recommend a simple, practical investing book to study and learn investing? That's it. Common sense investing. John Bogle. Right. I usually say Jack Bogle, but I think it's John Bogle. The common, the common, the, the little book of common sense investing. Right. He's the piece. Jack John Bogle is the guy who started Vanguard back in the early 1970s. Just passed away in his 90s a couple of years ago. That's a good book to get started. Let's see. Same in, as in the financial crisis, corporate is cutting the fat and letting go of the larger tenured employees. Listen, in uh, not inflation, but um, uh, unemployment was up to 3.9. Was it 4% in unemployment? E slowly but surely creeping up. Slowly but surely creeping up. Right? And I say slowly but surely because unemployment's been in a low for the last couple of years in, in the threes, right? Very, very low. Somebody said, question. I get my news from Jeremiah Ox Talks and Edward PhD here on YouTube when I'm not watching Smart Money. Bro, Mark, my, my guy, I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for putting that in. Thanks for the, the thumbs up, guys. Yes. I just want to be transparent with you guys. Twitter's a good launch point to look in, into what's current. Uh, I know some people that get a lot of news from X or Twitter. Uh, I only watch Bloomberg for my news, somebody else said. Anybody notice that news is rarely good? Listen, America was built on the labor of slaves, human beings used as slaves, and immigrants, right? But for hundreds of years, let's not get it twisted, understanding that, yes, the, the America was built on the backs of humans used as slaves along with immigrants, right? Because the humans that were used as slave weren't considered immigrants. That's just real talk. They weren't immigrants. You can't you they weren't immigrants. They were they were they you can't be an immigrant when you were in that 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 living condition. So let's be clear. Under again that person said it very clearly. Understanding labor is huge. Is huge. It's huge. Right. If you want to study something in America's history, uh, study the labor, how the labor class was used, how the labor class was used to enrich other people. Right. Whole classes of people. Right. Keep that in mind. I'm going to jump off here, guys. Listen, I appreciate you more than you know. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to grab your free information down in the description box. Don't forget if you came in here in the middle. Rewind this puppy all the way back to the beginning, guys. The Fed today made it easy for investors, me and you, regular everyday investors, to build wealth. Why? Because we dollar cost average into the market. And when we dollar cost average, we enjoy 
the bad days, but we really enjoy those good days like we had today, right? I appreciate you guys more than you know. I'm going to be back on here tomorrow, tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, dropping more knowledge about personal finances, the economy. That topic is yet to be seen. There's a couple things out there that I want to tackle, and I want to have that conversation tomorrow. Hey, as I always say, guys, listen, the best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Smash the like button. Take care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.